welcome to Into the Abyss. We just climbed out of the abyss of the color out of space and the color from space. And Kevin, you go because this is wild. Well, I think for all of us horror fans, this has been one of the most anticipated films of 2020 ever since we first saw the trailer. Uh, and we saw that Richard Stanley uh, was going to be directing. Uh, and uh, both Chuck and I uh, came to see it. It was only one night showing here at Regal <laughs> Cinemas. Um, and I went in cold. I hadn't read it in many, many years. You know what? I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to go in cold and get my initial impressions. So, Chuck, what are your initial thoughts now well, we've I just will... come out of Unlike Kevin, I was space. actually listening to the audiobook just today just to refresh myself on it. And it's extremely faithful. Keep in mind, when I say faithful, I don't mean that they, they took every detail and made it exact. It's set in the present day, for example. So it's not it's not to that level of detail. But the horror that's in it, all those the, the most memorable scenes from the story, they're all there. The tone of it, it's all there. But it's set for a 21st century setting, and they pulled it off. Like, this is incredible. I was, I was surprised that they could pull off Lovecraft in modern day as well as they did. What was interesting when you said uh, set for the 21st century, I thought it was interesting that the... The daughter practiced Wicca, but she was a gentle, kind Wicca. Well, that is because it, there's actually, well, there's, also, what, there's a Lovecraftian element to it as well. Well, Lovecraft's yeah. always doing that about witches yeah. and things like that. I, I just thought that was an interesting twist. So. Yeah. And we, we weren't going to give too many spoilers. That stuff that's all in the forward yeah. there. But, yeah. um, but it's, there's so many allusions and call-outs to Lovecraft all through it. It's incredible. Like little details, little t-shirts and things like that. It's so great. I especially like the paperback edition of the Necromonicon, which was published in the early 80s, and the fact that the hydrologist had a copy of The Willows by Algernon Blackwood. That was, that was cool, too. So there's all these little details, but if you're looking for Lovecraft, a good adaptation of, to have oh. adaptation of Lovecraft, it's there. Um, the, the cinematography is fantastic. Beautiful. It's, Absolutely beautiful. With the, color being the major theme of it um, I was marveling through the whole film about what they could have on there getting the, the little bits of color that just kind of sprinkles onto the setting it, it just envelops itself around the, the scenes and it's wonderful the the madness of the story yes. is so well done, it's yes. very well acted uh, if you're concerned about Nicolas Cage well he goes full on Nicolas Cage, and it's perfect for, for a story like that. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I was uh, surprised at how emotionally wrenching some yeah. of the parts. Of, again, no spoilers, uh, but there was an emotional resonance there that you don't normally get in a Lovecraft story. He, yeah. he usually has that kind of that wooden distance where you don't really feel for the characters. You also don't get that in, in I would say, a cheaper, simple uh, horror cinema right. as well. A lot of times it's more about, you know, just let's get to the visual effects. They actually built a, a full family there. They, they acted out. It was so well done. You feel for the family. You care about them. Uh, and that adds so much to the horror, the fact that they took that time to really develop this family. Do you have any party comments? Uh, I mean, see it. If you can see it in Absolutely. theaters, do see it in theaters. This is, I, I don't say this lightly, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is only on as a niche uh, classic of horror 10, 15 years from now. I, I think I mean, it's... I don't want to say because I just saw. I don't want to get you know push it too high, but I was actually thinking of like the thing as this movie went on, where there's just this dread that kind of just eats into you. It's it's haunting for the first half of the film, and then it just goes full on visceral. This is a much more tangible horror than you usually get with a Lovecraft story, which I think is that part of that cinematic adaptation. But it's there, and it's it's full on Lovecraft, and it's what you want from Lovecraft in a movie. I've always said that the the best cinematic treatment of Lovecraft was in the mouth of madness. Um, I would have to add this to that. Yeah. I, I will say one thing, though. For fans of the movie Face Off with John Travolta, I, I was really hoping, there's a scene where Nick Cage picks up a peach, and I'm like, oh, say it, say it. Anyone who's seen Face Off where the bad guy says, I can eat a peach for hours, I'm like, oh, you... We didn't get that, but no, that, was, that. that would have been in a perfect world. But yeah, absolutely, if you're a fan of porn, I mean, and they dial up to 11, like, they do not hold back. They go full lot on this one. So it is... Uh, it gets it gets rough. Now go see it in the theaters. If you don't get a chance to do that, pre-order the, the uh, DVD and Blu-ray. All right, all right, to the abyss. Signing out. Thank you.